A well-made ship can last for a long time. There's no reason why a cruise liner can't last for 40 years or more if it was put together well, and some of the ships out on our oceans today are even older than that. Like everything, though, ships have a shelf life. Usually, when they reach the end of their useful life, they're broken apart and sold for scrap. That isn't how the story of every vessel ends, though. Some of them become lost or abandoned. And it's the stories of those abandoned ships we're going to tell you about in this video. There are shipwrecks in every ocean and off every coastline in the world, but not all of them got there by accident. Some ships were sunk deliberately, and we don't mean by battle or combat. It's becoming increasingly common for countries to use unwanted old ships as artificial reefs in an attempt to nurture and promote the growth of marine life in coastal areas. And that's what Cyprus has done with the wreck of the Constandis. The 70-foot-long Russian trawler was sunk to a depth of 80 feet close to Ayanapa in February 2014 after gaining clearance from international authorities. You can't just sink a ship like this without considering the possible environmental impact. So it underwent a deep cleaning process before it was sent below the waves. Aside from becoming a feeding and breeding zone for the aquatic life that lives in the area, the Constandis has also become a tourist attraction, with visitors paying a small fee to be taken on a guided diving tour of the ship. There's another shipwreck on the coast of Cyprus that's worth talking about. But this one isn't serving as an artificial reef. It's the wreck of the Edro 3, which was deposited on the coast of Paia in October 2011. The Albanian vessel, sailing under the flag of Sierra Leone, was on its way from Limassol to Rhodes in fair weather when it found itself ambushed by a freak storm. Try as they might, the crew were unable to regain control of their vessel when the wind and the waves took it, and the ship had struck the rocky coast before they even had time to send out a distress call. Fortunately, there was a British military helicopter in the vicinity, and so the nine-man crew was rescued and carried away to safety. Emergency services workers successfully removed the dangerous fuel from the Edro's storage tanks, but the wreck itself couldn't be removed or salvaged. It's still there today, and has surprisingly become a favorite location for newlyweds to come for photo shoots. In November 2019, a pair of 17th century warships were found at the bottom of a channel in Sweden, and experts believe that one of them might be the sister ship of the famous Swedish vessel Vasa. Vasa was the flagship of King Gustav Adolf of Sweden's war fleet when it launched in August 1628, but sank on its maiden voyage out of Stockholm. That ship was raised in 1961 and is now in a museum. But this vessel, the Apollet, is still beneath the waves. The Apollet was a luckier ship than Vasa, enjoying a long military career before being deliberately sunk close to Vaxholm as a barrier against potential invasions by the Dutch or the Danes. Years went by, and the ship and its story were forgotten by the public. Historians and divers became interested in attempting to find it 10 years ago, and it now appears that their search is at an end. Based on the size, shape, and design of this shipwreck, it's almost certain that it's the Applet. The identity of the second ship is proving to be something of a mystery. It's degraded badly under the water, and doesn't appear to bear any identifying marks. You could easily mistake the wreck of the SS city of Adelaide in Australia for a floating forest, but the bushes and trees that grow upon what's left of its frame weren't planted there on purpose. This is the result of the old vessel being left abandoned in the water for more than 100 years. The steamship was already 50 years old when it ran to ground in Cockle Bay, close to Magnetic Island, in 1915. And so, given its age and the level of damage it suffered in the incident, it was abandoned and left to rot. It ought to have sunk by now, but it seems Mother Nature had other ideas for it. Its time standing in the water has been quite eventful. It used to have tall masts, and during the Second World War, an Australian bomber crashed into one of them while taking part in a training exercise and ended up crashing into the water right next to the ship. 
It also survived a cyclone in the 1970s, which partially collapsed part of the Iron Hull, and yet still didn't manage to destroy it. Since then, mangroves have started to grow up and straight through it, and at this point, they might be the only thing holding the ship together. The wreck of the Dimitrios off the shore of Githio in Greece is one of the most picturesque in the world. Although that has more to do with the beautiful scenery than the rusting iron hull out in the water. The 200-foot-long freight ship was built in 1950, but its service history is mostly unknown, and the circumstances of its wrecking in December of 1981 are even more mysterious. One popular rumor told by the townspeople that live nearby is that the Dimitrios was used to illegally smuggle cigarettes between Italy and Turkey. After port authorities identified and captured the vessel, it was deliberately set adrift, deposited on the coast by the tides, and then set on fire to mask any evidence of the illegal trade that it once took part in. It's a colorful tale, but without any evidence, we're unable to say whether it's true or not. The fact that nobody has ever made any attempt to recover the ship in the almost 40 years since its abandonment suggests that the theory of criminal activity might be true. The fire damaged it, but it would have been salvageable at the time. It's way past that point now. We have a few pictures of the MS Mediterranean sky from its glory years, so we know that it was once a proud and beautiful vessel. You'd never know that from looking at it today, turned on its side and so badly rusted that it's falling to pieces. This massive ship, built in 1953, has become a landmark on the coast of the Gulf of Eleftsina in Greece. As you can already tell, Greece and Cyprus are hotspots for abandoned ships. The ocean liner was originally called the City of York upon its launch from London, but by 1982 it had changed ownership and gained both a new name and a new purpose, serving as a transport vessel. The company that owned her went bankrupt in 1997 and all of its assets, including the Mediterranean sky, were seized. Nobody knew what to do with the aging ship, and so it was simply towed to its current location and abandoned in 1999. By 2002, it had started to sink, and it capsized the following year. Nobody knows how much longer it will last in this state, but it's deteriorating rapidly. There's no chance you'd miss the wreck of the MV E. Evangelia if you passed by Costinesti on Romania's Black Sea coast. The enormous 7,000-ton cargo vessel is still standing, as if she's ready to head back out to sea at a moment's notice. Sadly, she'll never sail again. The story of the Evangelia started in 1942, when she was built in Northern Ireland, as part of the United Kingdom's war fleet. Back then, she was called the Empire Strength. She shipped refrigerated supplies all over the world for the next four years. But after the war ended, she was declared surplus to requirements by the military who sold her. She changed hands several times during the next few years, sailing under several different names, before becoming the MVE Evangelia in 1965, when she became the property of a Greek shipping company. Three years later, sailing in ballast between Yugoslavia and Romania, she ran aground 16 nautical miles south of Constanta. No plausible reason for her running aground was ever identified, and it was widely considered at the time that she was deliberately wrecked as an act of insurance fraud. Although she looks sturdy from a distance, her entire superstructure has collapsed, and she's unsafe to be boarded. Our next stranded ship is called the World Discoverer, but the only part of the world she's been discovering anything about for the past 20 years is the Solomon Islands where she settled into shallow waters close to the reef formation that wrecked her. The reef formation was uncharted at the time of her accident, and so there's no way the crew could have seen it coming. The crash was at the end of a story that started in 1974, when she was built in Germany for Danish owners. The Danish company only held on to her for two years before she was sold to the Singaporean Adventure Cruises Company. After 16 happy years traveling the world, she was re-registered in Liberia and given a full refurbishment, returning her to a condition that was as good as new. The next 10 years were as peaceful as the previous 15, but in April 2000, her encounter with the reef badly damaged her. 
All of the passengers were evacuated, but Captain Oliver Cruz heroically remained on board and managed to heroically nurse her to Roderick Bay. Anything valuable on the vessel was removed, but the world discoverer herself couldn't be saved. From the rusty state of the Spirit of Sacramento, which is coated in a thick layer of rust on the city's Garden Highway, you'd never know that it was a ship with Hollywood connections. The three-story riverboat originally belonged to America's Army Corps of Engineers when it was built in 1942, and it was still in service as a snag boat under the name Puta when the legendary actor John Wayne saw it in 1954. He fell in love with it immediately and paid big money to acquire it. Just one year later, the boat was on screen in the John Wayne movie Blood Alley. We don't know when Wayne fell out of love with her, but by the mid-1970s, she was called Mansion Belle, and she was available for hire as a river tour boat. At the start of the 1990s, when she changed hands again, this time to an owner who renamed her Spirit of Sacramento and repurposed her as a floating restaurant. The boat caught fire in the late 90s and its owner didn't have the resources to pay for repairs. Unable to save the 50-year-old ship, they instead decided to haul it out of the water so it didn't endanger any other vessels on the waterway. That's where she's been standing ever since. There's a floating tram on the Desna River near Kiev in Ukraine, albeit not one that ever served the public. Nobody seems to be able to say for sure how this rusting wreck got here, but the most popular story is that a former chief of waterways in the local area wanted to build himself a river-based holiday home, but didn't have the necessary expertise. Instead of paying someone to make it for him, he purchased a few pontoons and then acquired an old tram car from a nearby scrapyard. The tram had once served on the roads, and so we don't imagine it was watertight. Nevertheless, he persisted, and inside the shell of the tram, he built a kitchen, a bedroom, and a living space. There was one crucial detail missing, though. His customized boat home didn't have an engine. That meant that if he ever wanted to move, he had to rely on finding someone to give his house a tow. After he retired, he no longer needed to visit the waterways, and so the tram became abandoned. You can get into it and walk all the way through it if you want to, but there isn't much left to see. Technically speaking, the SS United States isn't abandoned. It's moored and docked. Given that it's been moored and docked in the same place in Philadelphia since 1996, though, it's fair to say that it's at least in a state of semi-abandonment, and plans to rescue and revive the vessel appear to be no more advanced now than they were 20 years ago. This is a shabby way to treat such a historically important ocean liner. She was the largest liner ever to be built in the United States, with a length of almost 1,000 feet, and was once the fastest vessel ever to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Between her launch in 1952 and 1969, she was a transatlantic passenger vessel, but she's changed hands several times since then. Every owner she's had since the 1970s has failed to make money with her, and by the mid-1990s, the costs associated with stripping asbestos panels out of her interior led to her being towed to Philadelphia and left in situ. She's been at risk of scrapping many times since then, and she's only been saved from that fate by donations from the public. The latest plan is to turn her into a hospitality and cultural space, but based on the failure of all the previous rescue plans, we won't hold our breath. On a clear day in Cape May, New Jersey, USA, you can just about still see the rusting remains of the SS Atlantis poking out above the waterline of Delaware Bay. It would have been completely lost long ago were it not for one very important detail. It's made from concrete. Even the power of the waves struggles to erode concrete, and that's why the skeleton of the ship is just about holding together. Like many other countries around the world, the United States of America briefly experimented with the idea of building ships out of concrete in the aftermath of the First World War. The cost of the war had taken its toll on the global economy, and steel and other shipbuilding materials were in short supply. Some of the experiments were successful, but the SS Atlantis wasn't one of them. It snapped loose from its moorings during a storm in 1926, ran aground, and became stuck fast. It was immediately obvious that hauling a ship so heavy free of its predicament was impossible. 
and so the Atlantis was declared a total loss. In the near century since then, it's been slowly slipping into the bay, becoming one with the rocks beneath it. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!